This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to be discussing cysts in dogs and cats and how you can treat them at home. Hi you guys. So in today's video, we're actually starting out up here in my daughter's room. And um, this is uh, my daughter's bedroom. This is the bed or the big blanket Lewis sleeps on. Here he is right there. I'm not really so happy being part of this video. And, but what inspired me to make today's video is, you know, we Lewis woke up this morning, it's my, it did my daughter, and she noticed there's this little pile of blood. I'm just gonna zoom in in it and show you it here. There's the edge of his blanket, and there's the big blood stain right there, or the small blood stain now. As you can imagine, this then prompted me to quickly examine Lewis and try to figure out, you know, where, where is this coming from? And I'll just pull Lewis up over here. He's a little bit closer. Oh boy, Lewis. Yes, yes. Lewis would prefer not to be a movie star. Um, I'll, maybe I'll zoom in closer after. So anytime you see something unusual, it's just, initially just doing a brief examination of your dog. I mean, the very first thing I did with Lewis is just quickly lift up his lips, look at his gums, see that his gums are nice and pink. So I'm like, okay, there's nothing serious, internal bleeding. You know, I quickly scanned his pads. I didn't see anything on either of his pads. Go by Lewis. Thought maybe, cause he had just gone up, had he, was he dripping blood perhaps from his penis? Did he have a bladder infection? No. Prostate infection, um, all look pretty normal, not dripping there. And then I recalled and remembered, he's ha he's got more than a few different cysts, but one in particular um, underneath his left axilla or his left armpit that I have compressed and it's ruptured in the past. So that's what's happened. So I put my hand under his armpit and I felt where it was quite wet. And actually you can see here right now, whoa, that's what's come off. So. That's what's coming out of that cyst and that's why it was so, there was so much blood this morning on the floor. So it is right there. I'm sort of squeezing it with my thumb and my forefinger and see a little bit of blood just, or cystic fluid just coming out of it. Hi you guys. So the first thing I want you to be doing for any type of cyst, especially if it's ruptured, is be cleaning it. Um, so what I've got here is an antiseptic. It's called chlorhexidine is the actual name of the surgical scrub. It's what we would use during surgery. It's great for virtually all the bacteria that are on the surface of the skin and are likely gonna be getting into a cyst, causing it to become infected. So what I do, this is the concentrated surgical sub scrub soap. As I do a little squirt, probably about a teaspoon um, into you know about a half a cup of water. It's quite concentrated. And just take something like a gauze and you know get some of that hibitine and water concentration. And Lewis assist here is, the cyst here is fairly open. So it's, good boy Lewis. <laughs> so it's easy enough for me to just clean and scrub. If there was a lot of hair around it, <clears throat> then I want, to take, want you guys to take some blunt scissors, trim the hair away, or even better if you have some clippers. So just scrub it really well, you're trying to get as much of that infected tissue or the debris wiped off. And then after you've done that, you know, somewhere between 30 to 60 seconds uh, where it's nice and clean, then just take, take another gauze, um, preferably one where you're just dipping it in some, some water and just wiping off uh, that antiseptic flush. The next thing you should be doing for any of you um, who have dogs that have cysts, is the use of a hot compress that you can use three to four times a day. So this is just a real, just hot water. I just dipped it in, it was boiling and let it cool down a little bit. It's still really hot to touch, but I can still touch it to my skin. And I've just got a cloth. And the principle behind the compress is you're just applying that cloth directly onto the surface of your dog's skin on top of that cyst. Because there's two things that we're hoping to do. Um, one, the heat is gonna, um, increase the certain types of anti-inflammatory cells. We want to bring in your dog's own immune cells to start, start dealing with that cyst because it's sort of walled off and the body's not recognizing it foreign. Um, so it, it's allowed to exist. 
as well too often you can have really thick cystic um, fluid within within the cyst itself you know, when i'm thinking of something like a sebaceous cyst these um, fatty glands within this your dog's skin and it could be really a thick thick material that is also plugging up the duct so normally you have cysts that are that are producing a fluid for instance say a sebaceous cyst in your dog's skin and they're there to pro provide sort of protection for the skin um, give oil to your dog's skin coat to that to his fur and but what can happen is the actual opening or the duct you just think of it as a tube that drains the cyst it can get plugged up so often what we're trying to do with the compress is sort of loosen that up we want to un we, what we're hoping to do is you know loosen up that thick thick material with the heat and have it open up so then it can start to drain out again so this is something you could be putting on your dog three to four times a day go ahead and do it for a full seven days uh, to see if it's going to be beneficial. Third thing, you can consider some topical things that are great anti-inflammatories. Um, so right now with Lewis having this ruptured cyst, this is what I'm going to start using on him. So this is an aloe plant and you can just go obviously if you have an aloe plant, great. You probably should. It's so helpful. Um, but if not, you can just purchase aloe at any of the natural health stores, most of the pharmacies now. Um, preferably an aloe gel. Um, also you can get aloe in combination with calendula often as a, a topical cream that you can apply here's the aloe here's the gel i'm going to apply that directly onto lewis's cyst so it's right here and just squeeze it out and that's and that's something that i would be applying twice daily and i'm going to apply it twice a day right for the next three or four days until the cyst sort of decreases in size and the inflammation goes down for another thing topically you could consider is diluted tea tree oil. Um, I would avoid it for our cats and real small dogs if you're dealing with a big large area. Fortunately when you're putting it on topically in a diluted form it is quite safe. Um, the big thing is you just don't want your, your pets to be in, ingesting any of it orally. So if they're licking that area either, either don't use tea tree or then you need to put on either wrap it or bandage it so they can't lick it off or get some type of e-collar. So in terms of using, you're, you're putting it on in a diluted fashion. So I have here, here's our cup. We've got our, here's our tea tree oil or the melaleuca in the concentrated form. And I'm just gonna use olive oil as a carrier oil. So it's just, it's a matter of putting in two tablespoons and each tablespoon is 15 mils. So that's 30 mils of oil. And I don't want to get too much over the house. Then I would put in 10 drops of tea tree into that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. There's 10 drops of tea tree. Mix it up. And that's something you could keep in the fridge and just warm it up before you're going to put it on topically. And once again, you'd be applying that twice daily. Um, you need to do for a minimum of seven days. And I would suggest just applying it with a Q-tip. So I'm just gonna, I've got some on a Q-tip. I'll put some of this on as well too, Lewis, just to show you how to do it. So just TT diluted in the carrier oil, oil, olive oil. Just gonna roll it on as cyst topically. And then the last thing I want to discuss is the use of a supplement, uh, in particular, you're going to give to your dog orally or your cat orally, that's going to help decrease inflammation. Because we know for something like a cyst, such as Lewis has here, um, the actual type of cyst, I don't know for sure, but most likely what's happened is there's a small opening or a duct that's been obstructed via some inflammatory process. Perhaps he injured himself, there's a bit of scarring and it's blocked it off. Perhaps he's got some other reason for his body to react and cause this local inflammation. Let's, let's plug the duct so the cyst keeps filling up. So, so the, one of the big supplements I really like is proven to be very helpful uh, is curcumin. So here I have it here in the powder form. We've actually used up all the tablets. So here it is here. You can see it's, I'm not opening up because it's a super orangey. It stains everything orange. Maybe we'll see. I think it's, there's already more, some on my hands. Um, and you're looking at the 95% curcuminoids. You can get them in the capsule formation already. Um, a pretty standard dog dose is about 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. 
likewise with the cat, 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. And obviously there's a variation in that, but that's a level that's an anti-inflammatory, higher dose level. And what we're look, hoping to do, you know, especially in, in a sort of two week period, two to four week period, is decrease the inflammation that where that duct um, is closed over and allow it to open up again and drain properly. So uh, preferably you wanna get the capsules, the 95% curcuminoid capsules, and you're giving, as I said, about 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily, somewhere between two to four weeks before you can assess its effectiveness. Thank you for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to subscribe by clicking that link in that little circle above. And then you can go ahead, click that link in the box below. I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.